How's it going guys and welcome to this special collaboration. Thank you so much to Creepy Castle for inviting me to work on this video with him today. This isn't my usual type of content but today I'm going to be talking to you guys about five British urban legends and myths. So it's going to be a bit spooky. To start off at number one, I personally live on a farm so I find this one quite intriguing. We're going to start off nice and sort of not very scary, nice and sort of tame. And the first urban myth and legend I came across that I liked the sound of was that of Hob the Helpful Farm Goblin. So Hob the Goblin was supposedly a big hand on farms. He turned up at night and did work that apparently 10 men could do. So he, could, he was the equivalent of 10 men all on his own. And he also somehow made cows produce more milk and he was also very good at like churning milk into butter and jobs like that and all people had to do was let out a saucer of cream at night to keep Hob happy and they would have good fortune with their farm however if you were to upset Hob, Hob could then become a sort of menace to the farm and completely work against you by leaving gates open and disrupting cattle and just generally being a nuisance I found this very interesting just mainly because it would be really ideal if, that were, if this is true. I can't say I've ever noticed a hob around the farm. However, I've never left a saucer of cream out so perhaps that's where I'm going wrong. It would be nice if we could do that and then we wouldn't have to get up so early to feed the K lambs in the morning. Now we've got number two and number two is one that I actually heard a lot when I was younger and growing up and I think a lot of places have a similar sort of version of this story. It was interesting because actually a couple of days ago, completely unrelated to this video before I even knew I was doing this video, my friend was actually telling me a similar sort of story to what I know and that is of the Black Panther. Now around where I live there are a lot of people that say they've perhaps seen bits of the Black Panther or they've sort of seen shadows of it at night time and essentially it's just a large Black Panther that roams about in the countryside at night and sort of eats whatever it can get hold of being that livestock or people or sort of whatever. He was telling me though his mum reckons she saw one over where he lives and where he lives is a good hour away and that had me thinking about the fact that a lot of people said they saw this Black Panther and I was starting to wonder where it came from so I did a bit of digging and what I found was the Barghest. I believe that's how you say it, it's around that sort of thing but essentially what it is or what it's reported to be is a large dog with giant teeth and claws which to me would translate somewhat to a panther because a panther is like a bigger version of a dog with big claws and teeth. But what I found even more interesting than it just being a black panther or this barghast that's like the black panther is supposedly it can shapeshift and not into like you know a little cat or a bunny which they says that it, it can uh, transform into. Apparently, it can also morph into a headless man. And this headless man, when you see it, can burst into flames and disappear. Now, that isn't particularly something I ever want to come across. Not the panther, not the giant bar guest, and definitely not a guy with no head that runs at you and just explodes into flames. Not only is it terrifying enough to see this large black dog-like creature in the dead of night, supposedly it's a bad omen and if you see it the chances of your you know impending doom are pretty high now we've got number three and number three is a particularly scary character it's an old woman which kind of like character that goes by the name of black anise she's essentially lester's answer to the buggy man the buggy woman if you'd like so if you live in the leicestershire area and you're a child or you have children you want to be keeping your eyes out at night because she's said to roam about at night looking for children to eat and not only eat but use their skin as clothing not only does she wander about in the darkness looking for children she also steals them from their homes windows are her main place with her long arms supposedly she puts them out and grabs you through your window and drags you out and takes you back to her cave in which she lives she is said to have a blue coloured face be an old hag like woman and have iron claws. Now if Black Anise isn't somebody you want to encounter and you live in Leicestershire I suggest that when it starts to go dark you go inside 
lock all your windows, your doors, and wait until morning comes. Supposedly, the sunlight turns it into stone, and that is one way that you're safe to go out and about. It is also said that you can hear her scream within a five mile radius. So, you know, if you do happen to be out at night and you hear that scream, you want to get going because she's pretty close by. Now we're on to number four, and number four comes from a really, really tragic story. Now, on the evening of the 18th of November, 1987, there was a giant fire in King's Cross Station. The Piccadilly Line escalators caught fire, and they believe this was due to the fact that they were largely made of wood and grease, and that's just sort of a disaster waiting to happen. Somebody supposedly dropped a match, and that caught it alight and the, the fire was so hot and burnt so um, like violently that the actual floor above the, uh, of the ticket office actually collapsed and this very sadly killed 31 people. Of those 31 people, one of the people was believed to be a young woman and it is said that if you go to this train station, you visit this train station, there is a chance you can meet this young woman and she will be stood somewhere with her head in her hands weeping. It is actually reported that a guy was down there and saw a young woman weeping into her hands and he went over to see if she was okay and actually passed straight through her which is you know pretty creepy. The belief is that because it was such a tragic and violent death of these people that their ghosts and spirits are still roaming the earth and are trapped inside the train station which is a pretty horrible thought that they are still stuck on the earth and unable to pass through to the other side. And finally, we've got number five. Now, number five is a bit of a story. I can't find much evidence for it, but I really quite enjoyed it and thought it would be a nice way, I say a nice way, it's quite a scary horror story, but like a, a good way to finish my part of the video. So the story is called The Roommate Death. So the story goes, there was two young women who lived together in like a college dorm I believe it was and essentially what happened was late one night this girl's boyfriend had said do you want to come over and sleep at mine for the night and then you know we can go do something nice tomorrow and that sort of thing and the girl was thinking about it and she was like mm, yeah I'll I'll come to your house and we, I'll stay at yours but I just need to get some things from home before I go you know like some pajamas and things because I don't have anything to bring to your house so she went back to the house and she actually shared a, a room, like I say, this dorm room with her friend. And she went to the dorm room and not wanting to wake the girl up because it was quite late at night, she opened the door and didn't turn the light on and sort of bumped around nice and quietly, opened her drawer, got her pyjamas, got the things she needed and left the room. She then went over to her boyfriend's house and slept the night and just sort of, you know, enjoyed her time. She then came back home the next day and there were police all over her house. Now, supposedly, in her bedroom, her friend had been murdered and on the wall, written in blood, was, aren't you glad you didn't turn the lights on? Now, I'm not sure about you guys, but if I even knew that I'd been in the same room as a murderer, let alone the same room as a murderer, once he had just murdered my friend and the person I live with, I'd be insanely freaked out, to say the least. Uh, I can't, like I say, I can't find a lot of evidence for this story, but I thought it was quite a, a good, chilling little story. So guys, those are my five British urban myths and legends. I'm now going to pass you guys over to Creepy Castle for his five British urban legends and myths. Thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you Creepy Castle for inviting me to do this collaboration with you. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and don't forget, stay out of the dark. I almost forgot to say, my name's Hayden Lighton. Thank you guys for watching. No, thank you Hayden for being a part of this collaboration. So, without any further ado, let's get into five more British urban legends and myths. So this first one I did with the Spooky Boys Club, which I'm part of, and if you haven't seen that video I suggest go watching it, after this one of course, after this one I'll leave a card up above, 
or wherever if you can go watch it watch it though after this one but this first one is bloody mary now bloody mary is a well-known urban legend that was made popular in contemporary culture by school children across the uk and obviously in some parts of america because you know she's worldwide pretty much the spirit of Queen Mary is said to appear if an individual looks into a mirror in a darkened room and states her name three times. Me and the Spooky Boys Club, we actually found it to be 13 times. Like I said, go watch that. The ghostly apparition repundantly appears behind the individual looking into the mirror and can take a variety of forms including a skeleton, a witch, a corpse or a spirit which can depend on how she is dressed. Taunting her because of her miscarriages and false births can result in the spirit appearing to claw your eyes out. Young girls were told to walk up a flight of stairs backwards in a dimly lit house while wielding a mirror. If done correctly, a woman may have a chance at seeing her future husband's face. And there was a chance she may instead see a skull which indicates that she might die before marriage. This second one is similar to Hayden and his Black Panther. But this one is the Black Dog. One of the oldest and most persistent mythological creatures common to most regions of Britain, this is the Black Dog. A ghostly and malevolent creature which is often depicted in being frighteningly large. They can go by various regional names. I'll I'll put some up there because I cannot pronounce any of these. But there's many more where that came from for the names. Meeting one of them isn't particularly a good thing. In many local traditions, an encounter with the dog is pretty much meaning death. However, in a place in Somerset, it used to be said that the Gert dog, or the black dog, was the protector of children. I think I prefer that one to the death dog. Now, this one is called the Chime Child. The term Chime Hours originated in the north of England and refers to one of several myths related to the time of one's birth. It was popularised by folklore, folk, someone who was into folklore, Ruth, Ruth, Tong, Tung, insert name, yes, as you can see I'm not that good. She coined the terms Chime Child or Chime Children. The idea behind this piece of folklore is that individuals born during certain hours of the day or night gain special abilities. Although what these times are seems to be disputed depending on the individual source or location. Some of these abilities can range from between being an empath or seeing ghosts. Saying that though, at one time in history, having these kinds of gifts led to accusations of witchcraft, which again resulted in death. It is also said that if a charm child or other similar gift individual makes use of their abilities for selfish reasons rather than for the benefit of others, they are to perish. Damn. This is supposed to go, like for what it says here, Miserably and spiritually. Damn! Nah, don't do it. If you've got these powers, just help. Help people. Just do it. Similar myths have been said to exist in various other parts of the world, including Ireland, Scotland, Denmark and China. This... This is a screaming skull. Now, a screaming skull is a paranormal object, which is a human skull, and as the legend says, it can either speak or scream. 
The legend is most found in England and other English speaking regions. Now, the Betty Scum Screaming Skull of Dorset, England is attested at least as early as 1897 in the book The Haunted Homes and Family Traditions of Great Britain. The book details an alleged visit to Betty Scum in 1883 by curiosity seekers to investigate a skull which, according to legend, was an African slave once, which was owned by the owner of the house. Now, it is said that the alleged slave was buried in the homeland, but legend says that if the skull was removed from the homeland and placed elsewhere, the skull would continuously scream. Here on screen now is a list of other known screaming skulls. Don't say I don't treat you. Now, the final urban legend, myth, whatever you want to call it, in this collaboration, hits a little bit more home to me because this one is actually 10 minutes for me down the road. And this is the Blue Lady of Temple Newsom. One of the most well-known ghost stories in Leeds, which is where I'm from, is the Blue Lady of Temple Newsom. Many people around Leeds know or think they know this story, and as time has gone on since what happened at Temple Newsom, a nursery rhyme, chant, whatever you want to call it, became common knowledge, with Blue Lady, Blue Lady, you killed your blue baby. Some believe that if this phrase is repeated three times while looking in a mirror, it will bring catastrophic consequences to the speaker. Now I've just said this once, so I'm actually shitting bricks if I accidentally say it two more times. The truth is that the Blue Lady is probably based on a story of Mary Ingram, the granddaughter of Sir Ingram, who extensively rebuilt Temple Newsom House in the early 17th century. Sir Arthur was a very wealthy bloke, and he was very proud of his granddaughter. So proud that on the day of Mary's christening, Sir Arthur gave her a magnificent, expensive string of pearls. These were very valuable to both Mary, but very em emotionally attached to her as well. One day, Mary travelled to a special party at a friend's house in nearby Borroby. It must have been a very fine occasion because everyone wore their finest clothes and jewellery. Mary wore her pearls, obviously, and on her way home on the dark night, her coach was waylaid by highwaymen who demanded the valuables the travellers were carrying. Mary reluctantly had to give them her pearls. When they arrived home, Mary was of course distraught and fell into a troubled sleep. It's said that the next morning, Mary got up and acted as if nothing had happened. She went about her business without a care in the world. Until that evening when she retired to her room, looked in a jewellery box, and lo and behold, the pearls weren't there. She'd start crying and extensively shouting, Where are my pearls? Where are my beautiful pearls? Mary began to frantically search the house for her grandfather's priceless gift. She looked under chairs, tables, you name it, she looked there. And the sad part about this is she was only 14 when this happened. The story goes that on certain dark nights, her unhappy spirit still searches the house for the missing necklace. Eyewitnesses reported a commotion in the house, like furniture being violently moved, blasts of cold air and... And a little voice can be heard saying, well, where are my pearls, my beautiful pearls? The Gothic room on the West Wing is where, even recently, visitor assistants at the house have heard doors slamming and unusual noises. On one occasion, two separate visitor assistants heard an alarming huge crash. They both rushed to the source of the noise, but nothing was found. <laughs> 